Hey, this is Keith from Birdie Fuel Coffee, and you're listening to the Send Disc Golf Podcast. Everybody and welcome to episode number 12 of the Zen Disc Golf Podcast. I am your host, Patrick McCormick, author of Zen and the Art of Disc Golf, Discs and Zen, and the brand new book, Disc Golf Strategies and Tactics. I've got a great show for you today. I have the CEO of Birdie Fuel Coffee Company. Uh, it's a coffee company out there that's catering to us disc golfers and sponsoring disc golfers, really trying to grow the sport. Um, his name is Keith. He just wanted to go by Keith, he says, because it's not about me. And Keith doesn't do too many interviews, so we're very lucky to have him on the show. Make sure you stick around at the end of the show because he did give me a coupon code that you can go to birdiefuelcoffee.com and get yourself 15% off your order. But for now, let's talk to Keith. Keith, thank you so much for coming on the show. I don't know if you noticed, but I set my lights behind me to coffee shop. <laughs> nice so we are we are good to go thank you for coming on the show i'm looking forward to talking disc golf and coffee and sponsorships and all kinds of good stuff that you got going on over there at birdie fuel nice well thanks for having me on so the first time i heard of birdie fuel i want to say it was about a year ago and a buddy that i play disc golf with i also work with um he brought in a bag i want to say it was of the uh tina and eric oakley blend sure. And he said, uh, have you, uh, have you heard of this birdie fuel? I said, no, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. And he showed me the bag of coffee and he showed me the mug. I'm like, how have I not heard of this being a, <laughs> you know, big time disc golfer and also just a coffee nut. Right. And, uh, so we, we, uh, put some in the pot, we brewed it up and we were all sitting around the fire station and watching Joe Mez and drinking nice. Tina and Eric birdie fuel. <laughs> yeah, so, no, it's, it's, it is funny. It's like that, uh, you know, you don't know till you know. And then when you find out, you're like, how did I not hear about it? Um, for however strong that internet, you know, connectivity is, it also doesn't reach very far at times. Yeah. And then, and then after that, I started seeing the logo everywhere because a lot of times people take pictures of the book, my books, mm -hmm. and there's almost always a coffee cup sitting right <laughs> next to it. And it'll be like a birdie fuel coffee cup. If, as a matter of fact, the most recent one that somebody sent me was Vanessa Van Dyken. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, so she's one she's of our newer players. Yeah. Yeah. So she sent me a picture of the book and she's got her birdie fuel mug sitting right next to it. And she's, you know, chilling out. Yeah. So Vanessa's great. She's a, she's one of the nicest people I've ever interacted with in my life. Like just so just nice and easy and, uh, you know, just a great person. Absolutely. She was one of my favorite podcasts. So this mixture of coffee and disc golf, yeah. what, how did this happen? <laughs> well, you know, it, uh, you know, disc golf is the hobby and then uh, coffee is the obsession, right? And, you know, then disc golf is the obsession and coffee is the hobby and uh, it kind of just goes hand in hand, right? They're, uh, they're both activities that, you know, if you get involved with it, you get very um, committed to very particular becomes very ritualistic and 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 uh you know a daily habit right you want to get out as often as possible or you're buying discs every day or whatever phase you're in um and same with coffee so uh being involved with disc golf playing disc golf liking coffee and being involved with coffee it just was kind of an interesting kind of convergence of ideas of hey why don't we why don't we bring the two together right we like one thing we like the other we know that you know, there, there's obsessive people in disc golf and there's definitely an obsession over coffee. And uh, we paired it together, tested it out and, uh, and it seemed to resonate with people. So uh, it was easy to just keep going. Yeah, that reminds me of uh, George we had on a couple of podcasts ago. It was like a love of metal and a love of disc golf. Hey, let's blend these things together and, and create something. And, and the people love it. Yeah, you know, it's always like that. Uh, you know, uh, my wife and I always joke about it, but it's, you're unique like everybody else, right? <laughs> so, you know, George's thing with metal, like there's, you know, it sounds like, oh, well, who else like, you know, is really deep into metal and plays disc golf? Well, there's a whole community within the community, right? So, uh, you know, there's nobody that's... Niche. That's what he called it. What's that? A niche within a niche. Yeah, that's a niche what he within a niche, it. exactly. So 
Let's break it down, uh, Keith, and let's let's start with the disc golf, and then sure. we'll talk a little bit about the coffee. Tell me your disc golf story. How'd you get started playing? Yeah, so moved to North Carolina after college. I went to college in D.C. I grew up in New Jersey, um, and when I was in North Carolina, I had some friends, and they're like, "Oh, let's go." You know, we we went. You know, we'd go. Uh, lived in Durham, so we'd go out west to Asheville and go rock climbing on the weekends or camping. Other weekends, we'd go east and go to the beach and go surfing. And then when we were sticking around town, it was, you know, well, what's there to do? And, you know, these guys were like, oh, well, why don't we go play disc golf? And I was like, I, okay, I don't know what that is. And it was basically everyone, same story. Oh, well, we'll just walk in the woods. It's like hiking, but we'll throw things. I was like, okay, <laughs> sounds good. And uh, I think I took just a regular, I don't even remember what it was, but whatever, you know, ultimate, uh, you know, disc I had around the house. And that was my one disc. So I was just like throwing it down the path uh, the whole time. And, uh, you know, you do it once and you're like, all right, this is interesting. You do it twice and you're like, okay, can we go again tomorrow? <laughs> How yeah. about the next day? Um, and so it just kind of started there. And then I left North Carolina, moved back to DC, bounced around for a bit and kind of just forgot about disc golf for a while um, until my wife and I moved back to New York and we had young kids, my kids in uh, kindergarten and we meet other parents, right? So you, you make new friends because your kids are in school. So you have to be friendly with the other parents. And uh, so I go over to hang out with this guy, Chris, that I met and his friends. And we go to someone's house and they have that, um, it wasn't the Wii, it was like a PlayStation. Right? Okay. This PlayStation move thing. It had like the controllers and you could do these things. And they had this like PlayStation sports game on and we're doing stuff. And all of a sudden there was disc golf on there. And so they're doing this and I just go, oh, I said, disc golf. I said, you know, there's a course right down here at the beach in, in Babylon. They're like, this thing is real. <laughs> <laughs> they all thought it was just part of this video game thing. They had never heard of it for real. They were just like, they thought it was this funny thing they do with on the PlayStation. Wow. Okay. And so uh, you know, I think it was probably like the next weekend we went down. There's a great course here on Long Island. It's this little on a little um, executive golf course, but it's literally right on the beach. Like the course is there. You walk across the road and you're on sand dunes and the, and the, you know, the, the Atlantic ocean. So it's, it's gorgeous over there. And uh, so we went out there, they were all just, you know, jaw dropped the whole time. They're like, Oh my God, this is real. <laughs> and uh, Literally from that day forward, it was like five or six of us, seven of us. And we played like every single weekend, if not more for like a year straight. Um, and so awesome. that's when it kind of went from like, Oh, this is interesting to we're in. And we were like all in with it as a, as an activity to do. That, that that's awesome and and it's neat how the video game brought you out back on the course yeah i mean it was just great they're responsive just kind of like oh this is real like they literally had no idea they thought it would literally had no idea and it was you know 25 minutes down the road this course had been there and wow. nobody knew well, i remember when um the wii was popular and you right. know you got to talking about disc golf with people and they'd be like well yeah i've tried it on the wii and right. that was their entire experience yeah. Yep. At one point I talked to, um, I can't remember his name, but he was a dude who had, uh, his company was tr Tribaloid okay. and he had a couple apps that he had created. And he, at one point was creating a disc golf PlayStation game. I don't know if it ever came to fruition, but he right. had secured a lot of, um, like, I think that I want to say he got a lot of permission from the disc manufacturers to have their discs in there and everything. And, because he and I kind of had some ties through the podcast, he put me in the video game selling discs. <laughs> but I don't think the I don't think the game ever came out. But I did sign away my my life so that I could right. sell discs inside of a video game. <laughs> right, you know, you're some character in some game on the shelf somewhere. Maybe one day <laughs> it'll come back out. It'll come out like some retro thing that's uh, uh, uncovered. Yeah, it'll be like that, the E.T. game. You ever see that where there was like the, the Nintendo came out with the E.T. and it was like the worst game ever. So they got rid of all of them and they were all buried in a yeah. dump. Oh, that was Atari. That wasn't even Nintendo. That was, oh, way and I remember Atari. that game when I was little. One of my neighbors had it and yeah. it was terrible. It was the worst. <laughs> but yeah, there was that whole thing, right? They like, they they dumped them all in like a, a, a landfill or something and buried them and they got uncovered later on. Yeah, some guy went on a on a, a cartridge uh, or what do you call Atari cartridge uh, treasure hunt and found right. those things. Man, that's Amazing. so funny. But yeah, it is kind of it is kind of interesting how um, the video game did bring everybody in into the sport, and um, I think we are seeing more and more, especially apps. The, uh, mm -hmm. where people are playing a lot more uh, disc golf. Those have become pretty popular. Yeah. Well, everyone talks about with Disc Golf Valley. 
which yes. I download it and I play sometimes too. It's, you know, it's on by, I mean, I see people in our local club here who are like, they'll post on the Facebook page, like whatever the code is and like logging in, like, you know, if they're not getting down to the course, they're like playing with, you know, locals from the club, but they're just all playing on their iPhones while they're at home when uh, they can't get out to the course. It's uh I tried it and I was officially worse at that than being <laughs> on the actual course. I'm, I'm equally bad at both. So uh, you know, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I, I love it and I'm terrible at it, but I still enjoy it. Awesome. So coffee, have you always yeah. been into coffee? I mean, has this been your business no. before? No. Okay. You know, it was kind Tell of about a, coffee. That's funny, you know, like everyone else that drinks coffee, you know, you start off drinking it just as fuel, right? You get, you chug it to wake up in the morning, right? And you, you chug it at yeah. like three in the afternoon to make it through the rest of the day. Oh, and yeah. then you keep going, right? Um, oh, yeah. As much cream and sugar as possible, all that kind <laughs> of stuff. Uh, and then you just start, you know, you start seeing, you know, these other, you know, in most of our lives, it's been there for a long time, but Starbucks, right? Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden I was like, oh no, coffee can be a little bit more than, you know, the diner coffee, the gas station coffee that you get to go. And uh, then you start seeing more independent shops going that direction. And so, you know, you go from getting the Dunkin' Donuts, and you're like, all right, I'm going to go to that shop, you know, in town, we have a, a nice little downtown where we live. And uh, so you go and you're like, oh, okay, this is like a whole nother experience. And it's similar to, um, in a lot of ways, like beer, right? Mm -hmm. You start off pounding Bud Lights and Coors Light or Natty Light or, you know, the cheapest thing you find, Jenny Creams, whatever they are. And then all of a sudden you see like this whole other avenue and like you have the whole craft beer explosion, right? Mm -hmm. And coffee has the same thing. They call it like third wave for coffee. And it's, um, it's just, you know, all these single origins. So, you know, what was that random burnt whatever at the gas station? And now you're getting some, you know, unique product out of like Rwanda and you hear the whole story and the trail of how it gets from there to here and in your cup, it's, it makes it very interesting. You don't have and any so, of those those coffee beans that uh, animals eat and then, uh, <laughs> and then I know what you're talking about. Then, I forget the name of it. It's, one then... <laughs> <laughs> it's I forgot what it is, but yeah, it's like um whatever that creature is like poops them out and then that's like makes it the coffee bean. And like yeah, that, that if, uh, if I were a pro, I would not want that to be my coffee. No, definitely not. That's <laughs> uh you know, I remember reading that story when everyone was learning about that, and you're like, oh my god, like this has to be one. Uh, I remember I was little and there was like um, when they taught you about the internet and it was yeah. kind of like there was like the, the the tree octopus or something. And it was one of those things where the teachers were trying to teach you to like read through an article and figure out that it's not real. And it was about oh. this octopus that lives in trees. And the first <laughs> time I read that article, someone sent it to me. I was I like laughed. I was like, OK, that's funny. And it's like, no, this is real. And you're like, yeah. oh, my God, that's called gourmet. <laughs> yeah, gourmet, <laughs> gourmet, right out of the animals. Uh, yeah. Cool. So, yeah. so I guess if that's gourmet, whenever I go to a coffee shop and I see gourmet coffee, I'm like, no, I don't want that. I want the, uh, the one right underneath it. Yeah. Just not that one. Right. And you see something that sounds fancy and exotic. You're like, no, that's probably out of an animal's butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, absolutely. You know, all this coffee stuff. So, you know, always interested in, you know, so, uh, one or two friends I have, um, I've out of disc golf, like online and through other, you know, businesses we've run like simultaneously or marketed together. Um, we just kind of were like, what's something interesting we could do in disc golf that's not disc golf, right? It was, uh, you know, everyone can draw a design and not to downplay artists in disc golf, but you could draw a design and sell discs with 8 million other people and, you know, jump on every page and say, well, look at my disc, look at this disc and try and sell through those. And, you know, it's cool to, to have that artwork. I love doing that, but it's like, it's the same as everybody else. So it was like, what can be different? And, you know, that idea of coffee was something different. And uh, my friend, Jamie just kind of was like, you know, one night just had this like five ideas that popped out and it was like, that, that makes sense. And uh, so we took the idea and, and, you know, what, what anyone does, you know, let's, let's invest. $200 and see if it makes any sense. Um, and we found a roaster in St. Louis close to where he lived and uh, they were willing to help us out and get things started. And so we did a test run and said, let's see, let's see what happens. And um, uh, I think the first people we worked with as sponsored players, I think it was the Oakleys and Nate Perkins, if I remember correctly. Um, 
And so we posted it out there. We put stuff up there and immediately the folks that saw it were just like, oh my God, I can like connect coffee with disc golf, like two of my favorite things. And yeah. uh, it kind of worked. And from there, you know, April 1st will be two years this April. Um, and so it's been quite a, a, a quick rise in, a, in, in a, I don't know what you call it, notoriety and being, you know, being found and it's starting to spread and that just word of mouth going everywhere. Um, lots of players reaching out to us, lots of touring players coming to us and saying like, you know, I'm addicted to coffee. I drink it every single day. How do we connect on this? Oh yeah. You know, and, uh, and that kind of helps push it along, you know? And, and fuel is the right word because I, I know that before you go out to the course, you got to have that fuel. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, you know, sometimes you like to drink it and sit back and relax in the morning, but sometimes you need it and you, you need that boost to just get going. And, uh, yeah, it, uh, it but yeah, that I, th- I think you hit the market, you know, right at the right time because you got the popularity of uh, uh, like Black Rifle and Firehouse yeah. Coffee, and there's another one called like Death Something Coffee, and yeah. uh, we've ordered them all. We're constantly going through different types of coffee at the fire station yeah. because there's constantly a a pot brewing. Yeah. What do you what do you call some? Maybe you'll know this. What do you call somebody who has who's like a has a uh, obsession with coffee? Like there's, there's actual, Normal. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. There's a name, somebody, all right, here's a perfect opportunity. If you know the name for someone who's obsessed with coffee, put it in the comments. Um, no, there's like a, um, like there's audio file, you know, right. with somebody who's really like, really, oh, like sure. yeah, yeah. Whatever. there's actually a name okay. for somebody who's really into coffee. Um, but yeah, so you had all Usually those- it's, it's snob. Or like, Stop. you know, right? It's better than kind of people. Well, you I don't have a nice big there. beard, right? Nice big beard and uh, the thick glasses. Big grim glasses. Yep. yep, yep, exactly. But yeah, we we are always trying, you know, new brands yeah. and, and blends. And that's how yours kind of ended up being there. And when I started putting this podcast together, there was kind of, I'm, I kind of made a, a list on a napkin of who are some of the people that I would like to talk to. And yeah. I put yours on there because I was like, this is an interesting concept that they've got. I love coffee. I don't. So back in 2016, when I did the original podcast, we used to talk coffee all the time. All right. And the, uh, my co-host, uh, Zach Englehart, we used to refer to him as the ticklish hamster. That's a long story. If you want to go back to that, go back to season one. Was that can... the name of the animal that poops out the, uh, could beans, be. the ticklish Tickle hamster? And, yep. Tickle him <laughs> and, and he poops the coffee beans out. Zach, shout out to you. Love you, buddy. Um, but we used to joke all the time because he would come over and we would record like three podcasts in a row. And the way that we would do that is I would French press some Bastello mm-hmm. and <laughs> just, just, just go. Oh yeah. We, we would be holding on to the table and be like, I'd be like, Zachary, we're done. You can go home. I can't leave the table. <laughs> nope, not moving yet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, he used to, he used to joke on me because I I like my coffee so uh, so high octane. They won't let me make it at the firehouse because it <laughs> when they pour it, it starts coming out like syrup. So I don't know that I'm a professional coffee maker. I definitely right. love and and I can't. I personally I can't tell the difference between like Colombian and all the different mm-hmm. blends. But I, I can tell it with my heart if it's good, you know, because if, if I just get that, it's time to go, yeah. Jack. Let's get out on the course. Yeah, look, it, you know, it serves that. That's why there's such a, a variety, right? It serves different purposes for different people. And uh, and that's good. But, you know, that's you, you mentioned like Black Rifle and all those. I mean, it's, you know, what's great about coffee is that, you know, five people can get the same exact beans from the same exact source from the same exact farm and do their own preparation on it, their own roasting to whatever level they want to go and in the way that they they prepare it. And it could be five completely unique things, right? And so, uh, you know, it, it's it's like being a cook, like being a chef, you could give everyone a filet and it's five different preparations and each one has their own little, you know, uniqueness to it so that you know it's theirs. And then you combine it with the marketing, right? So you have the Black Rifle or like those Death Wish or the high octane everything and like, Again, people who are like, you know, I want to drink this and and be shaking or grabbing the table or running out the door, you know, they make that and you can have it and it's great. Yep. And, you know, coffee, coffee is kind of a unique thing because it's, it's almost like it, it, it's almost like the language that is understood around the world. And it is the drink that brings people together. Yeah. 
you know, that's, that's why I like it so much. Right. It was, uh, it's that ability, you know, I always liked, you know, obviously now everything's to go <laughs> right until all of this ends at some point. And hopefully some things like coffee shops and come back to like being a place you could hang out and they don't just forever stay as to go places. Yeah. But, you know, I like nothing better than, you know, when I, when I travel places, it's like, aside from finding a disc golf course, I like finding a coffee shop, right. And being able to sit down, see what they do, how they present it, what their, you know, their favorite thing is how they, they like to, to handle everything. And, uh, you could sit and you could be, I'm a, <laughs> and it might come through in this podcast, but I'm, I'm like a, a very social introvert, right? I prefer to be around a lot of people, but be quiet. Uh, and so a coffee shop is that kind of place, right? You could sit amongst a lot of people and there's music and noise and things going on, but you could be like in your own space and just be quiet. People watch it. Yeah. And disc golf the same way. Uh, you know, I'll go play in a tournament. I'll talk to two people, but there's a hundred something people around them. I'm comfortable being around them, but I don't need to talk to everybody. (laughs) Well, it's funny that you say that because I always do as much research as I possibly can on the individuals that I bring on the show. And um, I found no other podcasts. (laughs) Maybe you've done them, but I couldn't find them. Um, and then I went to your website and I was like, all right, there's gotta be an about me section on here somewhere. Nope. Just a shop. (laughs) Yeah. It's because it's not about me. (laughs) <laughs> you know, the stories like you know and it, it's interesting so I, i've been on like um tina and eric Oak, the oakley's you know we've been working with them for a while and uh so over last year when when all this happened right and they got taken off the road and they just kind of came back after waco and just that was it um they started doing morning coffee right and it was their own thing they just every friday they, they would do coffee and they would make you know whether it was their own or a different birdie fuel and just do their podcasts and just talk and it's carried on till now they still do it um and so i was on there once so this really you know i get asked to be on podcasts a lot i don't i don't <laughs> that's my that's my uh social introvert like thank you for asking me that's really great but i'm gonna say no but every so but often someone yes catches me. me yes well you know why because <laughs> you know it, it, it's very funny because when you reach out i'm like you know, I've, I've had the books for years. Right. So I was like, Oh, that's cool. Cause wow, it's something man. that I appreciated in reverse. So, you know, the Oakley saying, Oh, do you want to come on one time? Yes. Like you, you, you've been good to me. I've been good to you. It's, it's nice. So your books were good to me. You know, it was great. Uh, a great read. You know, I, I like the philosophy. I like where you go with it. And so when you asked, I was like, that's one I could say yes to. Dude, that's so great to hear. I had no idea before you came on the show that you even knew who I was or knew about my books. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely <laughs> read those. So good to hear. Me and all the me and all the uh, the video game disc golfers that became real disc golfers. <laughs> as as a side note, just because they started with video games, you know, they they are uh, a million times better than I am. They're they're much higher rated. Some of the the, the biggest bombers that we have locally, um, they're good, and it all started from you know throwing the, the playstation remote around but you know it, it's it's funny now that i'm thinking about because i totally forgot about that that video game when he was describing it to me he was like well i think i'm going to have you back behind a counter digitally you'll be selling discs but i'm thinking that you might have your books back there too and if you sell them a book maybe they'll level up like on a mental game or something right. <laughs> so they would score points playing disc golf and they could come yeah. back to the shop to the yeah. pro shop and then they could buy a Zen disc golf, Zen in the art of disc golf. And then they would kind of level up a little bit on their bar as far nice. as their mental. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. man. Yeah, so I remember cool. when, um, what's his, when Steve Dodge, when they were doing the, the board game, everyone was reaching, people were reaching out to me and they're like, oh, you should be in it when they were looking for people to sponsor parts of like, Cause coffee would be perfect. Cause it was that same thing. Oh, you have your, your birdie fuel and you level, level up or you get an extra strength on your, whatever it was. And I was like, that's good. And I kind of, didn't do anything with it, but I was like, that's kind of cool. Like, and yeah, that, that would be great. You read a, a Zen and the Art of Disc Golf and then you, you level up on your mental game, right? You you make that big putt because you're, you get back in the zone. <laughs> yep. And I, I guess if he was making it now, he could put the birdie fuel in there, just like yeah. you're saying. So yeah, it's just, it, it's a big vicious circle. Yeah. It just goes around and around and I'm just so happy to play a small role in it. But yeah, yeah. man, thank well, you so how, much. That's how we feel too. It's, you know, this, this stuff we do, you know, sponsoring players with this coffee. It's, it's, it's great. It's a nice match. Um, yeah. There's some really good people out there and, you know, while they're not going to make, you know, 
Paul Macbeth money off of coffee here. Um, you know, it, it, a coffee habit can be expensive, but it just it, it becomes something that's in in what they do. Right, they get sponsored by a manufacturer. They have some apparel companies or what have you. And this was kind of one of those things where it was like, I remember like Vanessa, when, when we connected, she was like, I can't believe there's like my ability. I, like I can have a disc off coffee. Like I could have my coffee. I drink coffee every day. I can't believe I can have a coffee. That's my coffee. And it's disc golf related and all these things. And it's just, it's a really nice match. It makes it really fun to, to engage with people on this stuff. Cause you know, it's not a, you know, we're very specific about don't, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll grab a, a bag that I have here. I have one. Uh, here's what we do with like gatekeeper media. We've known Derek for a while. He's, he's in the local area out here, but it's like, you know, when Tina and Eric or Vanessa do stuff, I'm not like buy my coffee. You know, it's not a coffee commercial like that. It's just, uh -huh. you know, it's, it's something that they could connect with. That's part of their lifestyle. So it just is part of what they do and it doesn't become some schlock like, you know, you, you work with us and you have to like, you know, sell coffee. It's just, it's just a natural part of their life. So it makes it really easy to, to partner up with folks. And there's some really good folks in the disc golf community. So it's, uh, it makes it easy to, uh, to want to support people. You know, we have Tina and Eric, Chris Clemens, Jordan Castro, Kristen Tatar, uh, Steve Brinster, who's like the local legend out here in New York. Um, yeah, we, you know, we started working with Valerie and Alexis Manduhanu, who did great this past weekend, which was really nice to see. Uh, they killed it out at the memorial. Uh, you know, Vanessa, Eric McCabe, uh, Tina and Eric, Trevor and, uh, and Courtney Cannon, like just, they're just really good people. And it's, it's nice to work with them. Oh yeah. I've talked to several of the ones that you've mentioned. And like you said, just all super cool people. Yeah. The best is though, you know, every we can't say yes to everybody. Right. And so uh, we, we've definitely had a few people who have like messaged us like, Oh, we want to be sponsored. You know, all this stuff. I'm like, my first question always is like, all right. So tell me about what kind of coffee you drink. Right. What, you know, what do you like? So that we, we see kind of where you're at and talk about this kind of stuff. And I will we'll never name the name, but definitely had someone come back to me, but well, I don't really drink coffee. And I was like, I, I don't understand. <laughs> I'm really confused now. Like, tell me more why you're reaching out to me. I need uh, as many products as I possibly right, can. <laughs> right. Give me money from your product. I will pretend to promote it. I don't I, like, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> and that's where someone like a Vanessa coming in, it's, you know, just as a more recent one, again, yeah. along with everybody else, it was just like, you know, it's just so easy and natural. So it's, oh, she's uh, so super makes cool. It great. Have you seen these, just, just as an aside, have you seen these uh, videos of Kevin Jones and his coffee habit? I have not. I haven't. I'm going to have to pull this up. I know he's, uh, everyone who tours around with him that's connected with us mentions him, but we haven't uh, connected on anything. But if We're you got something, yeah, let's see. see if we get in trouble. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen because you need to see this. This is funny. This is. Oh, there's an actual video titled with it. Nice. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And uh, this is from Small Boar Outlaw, and he just compiled a bunch of, I think, GK Pro footage. Let's see if we can play it. I don't know if you can you hear it. Can you hear that? Uh, I can't. Uh... <laughs> okay, my apologies. Just check it out. Uh, look I'll listen up... to it after. We'll edit that back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look up too much coffee for Kevin Jones and other shenanigans. And uh, the entire thing is this, this uh, small bore outlaw has combined, you know what GK pro is going to go after them now, because I mentioned <laughs> you use my videos. Use the video. now, it's got 30, almost it's got 38,000 views, nice. but it's just, everyone starts with him. Like uh, telling him what, what kind of coffee he drank that morning and then <laughs> running around like a crazed lunatic. It's absolutely hilarious. Nice. That's a funny thing. Cause it's like, right. So that should be an obvious connect, but the, the community is so big and there's so much going on. And it's like, uh, it's funny when you see something, you're like, well, how, how haven't we spoken already? Yeah. You need to see this. You, yeah. And I'll be happy to be the person who had uh, set that up. Set that one up. Nice. And if that's the case, Kevin, you've been mentioned twice, once on this one <laughs> and also on the bar speed pod. So we probably should talk anyways. <laughs> I haven't even reached out to him, but, <laughs> but yeah. So when you set up your sponsorships with these individuals, do most of them contact you or, 
Are you out there searching? What, what's going yeah, on? You know, it's like, it's a little bit of both. When we started, it was reaching out to some folks. So I remember at the beginning, again, like Nate Perkins um, and Tina and Eric, I think I, we made the contact originally and it was just kind of presenting kind of what we're trying to get started again, because there was no recognition. It was brand new, nothing existed, right? So it was like, look, here's what we're looking to do. How do you feel about this? And again, it was trying to make a match. So again, back then, someone like Nate, you know, easygoing guy. And it was, again, part of his daily routine. It wasn't this like, pretend to like coffee and and promote it. It was just a natural fit for people. Um, but as, you know, we connected with like Chris Clemens, well, Jordan Castro, like they're best friends, right? They, they're touring buddies. And uh, so, you know, Chris had been getting Jordan into coffee, right? That, that was always a story. It's like Jordan started drinking coffee because Chris was drinking coffee. And so then we connected. And so then Jordan became a part of what we were doing. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's always interesting when the random email pops up or the random DM pops up. And I'm like, oh, I know that name because I've watched them on, you know, right. you know, on, on Jomez or GK or Gatekeeper, however many times. And, uh, you know, they're asking us the inquiry about connecting and how it works. So how do the sponsorships work with you guys? If you're, if you're open with uh, discussing yeah. that. Um, free coffee all the time, right? So however much coffee they want, you know, we, you know, everyone takes like two or three bags a month. You know, it depends on if they're, you know, in the off season, it might be a little bit more when they're home and, and, and uh, drinking coffee every day versus, you know, having to prep on the road and what they, you know, uh, that in between, but Free coffee, they get a percentage of every sale. So every bag of coffee that's sold that is from their brand of coffee, they get money from, which is great. Um, and so we kick money over to them once a month from everything that was sold in the month. Uh, and then the usual stuff, you know, whatever random mugs and, and swag that we, that we make. Um, and then a number of them that, that vend on the road, you know, we give them stuff in bulk so that they can sell and, you know, keep all the profits off of that. So uh, it's just, again, it's that variety. So everyone's out there with their, their table set up when they're vending at a fly mart with their discs and they're this, but not everybody has coffee or this other unique thing that's there. So it, uh, you know, it's a nice add on item for them. It draws people in and it's just, again, part of that whole uniqueness of, uh, of where disc golf has extended to, right. It just kind of adds to that story of disc golf getting bigger than itself. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I'm trying to, I'm thinking, trying to think of other sports that have their own coffee and I'm, I'm coming to a loss. Yeah. No, <laughs> you know, yeah. So, and this is where my wife comes into play in this. Like she always comes to me. She's like, all right. So get the, she knows she, she accepts that I play disc golf me and my friends and a number of my friends, you know, it's, it's our friends. Right. So like we're the husbands and wives that are all friends. So she knows all the guys too. Um, but she won't play disc golf. She doesn't like disc golf, <laughs> but she says she tolerates it, let's say. And, but she loves it. She likes working with everything we do here, but she's always going to the story of like, all right. So, you know, you have these names, you have a coffee and we call it double bogey. So that's a golf term. Right. And you have three putt. That's a golf term. She's like, so disc golf is cool, but you know, golf, right. The, the PGA is, is massive. So where are you going there? Where's the, where's the, the golf, the golf coffee. And I'm like, all right, maybe one day, <laughs> like, but I like working in that, you know, in that, that realm that I'm comfortable with. Yeah. And I guess that was going to be my next question was, uh, so where are we going with this, uh, birdie fuel? What, what's on the horizon for you? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, we'll see where things go. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of contact being made with us on lots of random ideas and, and lots of opportunities. You know, we, we don't say yes to everything. Um, we can't say yes to everything, even the ones that we want to sometimes, you know, just from capacity. Um, but, you know, it's interesting. Last year we were uh, asked by Dynamic Disc to be a, a sponsor of uh, what was the GBO. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Doug and the team kind of brought us in and huge plans. It was, it was wonderful. It was like this amazing thing. Like they, they reached out. It wasn't us um, trying to track it down. They found it to be unique and interesting. And so, you know, we were going to try and set up at every course in the morning and have free coffee for everybody and set up at um, the dynamic disc store in Emporia and be there all day. And then at the fly mart, all this stuff. And then, uh, you know, we had things out, you know, there was a, a coffee we did just for the player packs um, and they did a, a glass mug, like this beautiful glass mug. And, all these great plans. And then, uh, you know, it didn't happen. 
right? It was, uh, it was, yeah, we're not going to have a tournament. Everything's shut down. You know, it was that craziness of, of last year that's dragging on into this year. Oh, um, yeah. But that was a, that was a nice big thing. But I think that had a big ripple effect of, of the information that got out there and the awareness for us just out of that format. But we'll be back again this year. So they asked us to come back for, uh, for what's now the DDO. Um, and so I won't talk about what we're providing because that's for them to, to announce, but we'll be out and about, They'll, you know, we'll have the feather flags and we'll have tables set up and, and we're trying uh, to come up with a few different unique things to do on there, um, on the grounds there for everybody. Cool. I can't wait to see that. Yeah, it'll be nice. Hopefully it comes together. Hopefully, you know, the, the world gets more comfortable with lots of people gathering in places and it's safe to do it. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I cannot wait to see the galleries back out there. Yeah. I think yeah. the players I, need it. I mean, they've been playing amazing without them, but they need mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I was listening to, to someone today on, on my drive and it was that conversation of, you know, they're glad to be out playing, you know, they don't need the crowd to play, right. It's, it's their own men's game, but there there's this energy that's missing. Right. And I'm sure. you, you can't feed off of each other to get it because you're all competing and you're, you're focused, but that, you know, some people dislike it, but a lot of people just, even if you're, you're ignoring it, it's still just knowing that energy's there. Right. Um, so yeah, that's, I feel bad. It's, it's, it's like it's last year. Tough. I remember um, the first band I saw, you know, that because of music, I mean, yeah. with music, these, some musicians it's, it's not affecting, but a lot okay. of musicians it, it is affecting. And I was, I remember the first band I saw to do like a lot, they, they had all their concerts got their tour got canceled. They yep. just dropped an album or they had one coming up is the Chromax. I don't know if you ever heard of them. Yeah, I've heard the name. Yeah. Yeah. New York hardcore. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Chromax, they said, well, we're going to do a show and we're going to film it and we're going to play it live. And I remember watching this and they played with such intensity and I'm sitting there going, they're playing to a wall. <laughs> How do you play <laughs> with that like hardcore metal intensity? Right. So, I mean, and that kind of makes me think of the, you know, disc golfers. I mean, there are people there, they're in their zone, they've got their focus on and that's where they should be. But I, that energy has to be an element that, yeah. you know. Yeah, no, I feel bad. My, my nephew's in a band and like, uh, same thing. He kind of was they were geared up to get on the road for the first time. He's in his early 20, like just finished high school, like a year of college. And we're like, they were ready to, they were going to be an opening act through Texas and some other places. They had like a 10 day thing set up, gone, didn't happen. And, you know, so he's posting stuff every day. He's recording every day, like in his bedroom at his parents' house. Like, and I feel bad because it's like, you know, just shut down. And, you know, I, I miss disc golf, you know, when it got all shut down and you couldn't really get out there until everyone was like, Oh, it's actually good to be outside and do, that's right. There was that, that pause on everything. And I was yeah. like, well, maybe disc golf is a good outdoor activity, but not getting <laughs> to see live music for a year and a half now. Like we were, my wife and I were somewhere um, and there was like a, a guy playing acoustic outdoors and it was like, you know, on a stage far away from everybody. And like, but we were like, it was like amazing just to have like, you know, 45 minutes of what's typically, you know, a, a very, uh, important part of our lives we go see live music all the time and uh, yeah we definitely got to get back to that strange yeah and and yeah i don't even want to go down the route of the science you know that i was just mind blown well i've been mind blown so many times over the past year year of 14 months or whatever we're going on now of you know okay well we're gonna have to shut down the parks the parks (laughs) the beach (laughs) You should not go outside. Okay. Like it just, but again, you know, it was, I, I, whether I agree or not with everything that's going on and and the way good decisions are made, it's like, I get it. Nobody knew exactly what to do or how to do whatever it is with it. But it's like, I'm just, I would like for things. And again, it's not to get back to normal because some things will never go back to what they were, but just I'm I'm excited for the day when things just kind of ease up and everybody's a little less tense you know yeah. so you have more people going out and about but then you have people who are very anxious about being out and about but they're going out and yeah. about and then mm-hmm. they're getting angry at everyone else that's out and about and it's like maybe you're not ready to be outside <laughs> you know maybe yeah. you're not ready to be out in public yet so you know don't go out there and then get all crazy with everyone else so. yeah when when you when you coop people up for a long period of time and then you release them hopefully we're not <laughs> like you know 
animals <laughs> coming out of a zoo and you know just chaos ensuing um but it'll well, be nice to, to tie it back in it'll be really nice if things like the the ddo and stuff can go off with spectators and lots of players and kind of that you know one of the things about that event and, and other events, it's that that festive nature of it right that that people getting together at these things that don't get to see each other all the time or you know along all their travels it's a nice pause and there's like other things going on and you know the big social gathering around it is really nice yeah and you know and i've talked to a lot of people about one of the biggest things with disc golf for people or disc golfers is community but it's funny you mentioned the community aspect because uh yeah disc golfers need their community but I'm sure you've noticed over the year and a half or so too, you know, that the online community has devolved into <laughs> something terrible. It's a, every, every disc golf group I'm a part of on a, on Facebook somewhere, you're like, Oh, everyone just needs to come. <laughs> everyone needs to get outside more. Everyone <laughs> needs a, the, the, the in-person interaction again, because people are getting a, a, they're getting a little uh, cabin fever, Divided. a little stir crazy. Yeah. Uh, it devolved a little bit. So hopefully, uh, you know, I feel like when you coming out here again in, in the Northeast and everything, people will get back out and uh, things will, will ease up a bit. I feel like when you divide people in any way, shape or form, they split to the extremes. <laughs> yes. And, and it's us. There's always, and yep. I think there's a psychological term for that. And like, for example, um, like I'll use a fire department for, because that's what I live and I understand right. that. So if you have an A shift and a B shift, if you have an A shift, and that's the only shift there is. Everybody's going to get along. Everybody sees everybody as equal. The moment you split that into an A shift and a B shift, it's, oh, B shift's a bunch of, <laughs> <laughs> and a B shift goes, A shift's a bunch of, you know? Right. And as soon as you, um, as soon as you put a barrier between people, yeah. things split and they go yeah. to their extremes. It's an unfortunate um, happening within our human psyche. Yeah. Yeah, no, it'll be interesting. You know, I, I, again, we, so we run, uh, uh, two tournaments locally here on Long Island every year. And, um, you know, we had to skip them this past year and we're looking to do one the first weekend in June is, is one of the events usually. And so we, we were talking to the parks department cause it's in a, um, texture state park. So it's, it's in a New York state park, the course, and it's a great course. And we run the tournament there every year and we kind of got the approval now to be able to have the tournament with up to 50, 50, five, zero players. Um, to 21 hole course, usually we have four in a hole. Usually it's 80 something players yeah. uh, and people hanging out and people around, you know, in addition to the coffee stuff, my wife is a personal chef. So her and, and one or two of um, the, the spouses of, of the group of us that run the event, they do free breakfast that they cook on site for everybody. Like there's all these great aspects to it that we haven't been able to do. And I don't know what we'll be able to do this year, but uh, it's nice to see it starting to come back together. And seeing people from the local community who have been arguing about getting people on the course and can people be there and, and everyone should just be out there and, and, you know, there should be no rules and everyone was like, nobody should be anywhere. And right. now all of a sudden, the, the fact that this tournament might be happening, you see kind of people coming back to the middle, <laughs> kind of like, oh, OK, this is good. We could kind of have an event in some kind of fashion that makes me comfortable from this side. And I'm willing to, to dial it back to this way from this side. So like. It'll be nice to see if we get a nice event to uh, to take off, but it's starting to plan for it has felt good because it feels like things are coming back around and I'm seeing people act a little more rational oh, uh, yeah. from both sides. I'm not even picking a side on who's irrational. I think right. both sides are equally irrational. I agree wholeheartedly <laughs> with that statement. And yeah. like I said, it's it's a whole A shift, B shift thing. Yeah. If there were no shifts, we'd all be in it together. We'd all be... Yeah. <laughs> The fact that there's shifts, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Before we go, Keith, yeah, we need to talk about the coffee infused minis. <laughs> I think I got a couple back here. Yeah, because people need to know about these things. This is one of the interesting things that you got going on besides your coffee. Uh, my buddy showed up at the um, at the firehouse with his mug, with his bag of Tina and Eric. And he goes, smell my mini. I'm like, I'm good, dude. <laughs> How did that come about? I don't know, but I think you just created the new tagline. I got to put on everything there. <laughs> smell, smell my mini. mini. <laughs> I'm like, I'm um, good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's it was just one of those things. Uh, Craig uh, from Zing, who, you know, makes minis for everybody everywhere, um, 
kind of connect with him. I had done s- stuff with him in the past, you know, doing minis for events or other things. And he kind of threw the idea at me. He's just kind of like, what, uh, you know, you ever think about putting coffee in something? I'll do it. And I was like, okay, let's try it. Let's see what happens. And so, uh, you know, he, uh, he, I, I send him whole beans. He grinds them up to the size that he wants to, for it to mix in with the plastic and, uh, adds a little, uh, you know, additional uh, coffee scent to it to go along with it. And they're awesome. And they last for a long time. That's not last. Like it, it, it takes a while before it dies out. I was shocked. I was like, oh, that'll be cool. It's like, um, who's that? Like MVPs done like uh, mint minis and like, you know, uh, the orange judges that uh, Dynamic did at the last uh, GBO, you know, and those things smell for like a couple of days and then it kind of disappears. But, you know. Uh, those two I picked up, uh, you know, I've had here for a couple of weeks and they're still uh, still as strong as they were when I got them. Yeah. The, my first thought was, well, when he, you know, he's infusing this plastic together, man, it must smell great there. But then I got to thinking about now I've smelled burning plastic or melting <laughs> plastic before. Right. And I meant to ask Jesse from Trash Panda because right. he has to wear like all that, like, you yeah. know, uh, P100 to make sure I'm like, what does your garage smell like? You yep. know, when you're recycling plastic and grinding it up and then burning it and putting it into a mold. What is your yeah. what do your neighbors think? <laughs> But, yeah, you it's got to do something in that neighborhood. I, like I've seen his videos too, and it's kind of like that's all amazing. But somebody out there is like, "What is going on in that garage?" Right? <laughs> because that smell's got to be terrible. And he sure does talk to himself a lot in there. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. They're like, "What? This guy just stands in there by himself talking all day." What but on the, on those those things, that idea, I had gone to um to Dave at Gateway, Dave and Dom and everybody, and asked about doing wizards with the coffee in it, and they said, "Absolutely not." And I was like, okay, so, you know, tell me why. And so it's a great story. So um, I don't know if you know Wolfpack Discs out of uh, Michigan. Brian, just, a, you know, they sponsor some players. They have some branded stuff, kind of really nice guys, uh, that whole group. But uh, at, <laughs> at one point, I think, and I don't, I don't want to even know how, but they had gotten wolf hair somehow. <laughs> I, I don't know. And... Dave went and, and they made wizards with it. And I think they, I've, I think this, I think they only pressed like 10 of them. I think after 10 of them, they shut the whole thing down because the Jacked smell was the so sh- foul. Oh, I bet. <laughs> so again, I don't know the source of actually getting the, the hair to use, but, uh, but it's that idea, right? Does it work? But coffee's, you know, coffee's coffee. It's, yeah. It's Cause good. burning hair is awful. Yeah, and that's what they didn't account for. They thought it would just get pressed in, but it was burning. It just was the worst spot. That story was like, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. I'm like, well, coffee wouldn't do that. And they were like, we don't care. We're not putting anything, anything that we don't decide on. We're not taking some random stuff and putting it into our our plastic. Well, those injection machines have got to be super, super pricey. I priced them out at one point just to see what it would it be. I mean, it's like multiple cars. It's like hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I I would be concerned to put anything other than what they're directly responsible for pressing to. (laughs) Right. There's not a lot of like, oh, let's test that out. But Craig was willing to test it out. I mean, I think he messes around with stuff all the time. He's like, he's that guy. He's almost like the mad scientist kind of guy. And he's just kind of like, oh, well, what can I do today? What can I do differently? And uh so he tries all this stuff out and this, this was like a home run. Well, that makes me think of the, uh, the steady Ed story. You're familiar with that, right? With the uh, ashes in the, in the disc. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so if anybody who's listening is just brand new to disc golf, this is a piece of information that you need to know about. Steady Ed Hedrick is the father of our sport, right? He was, I believe he worked for Whammo and he created like the first Frisbee, but mm-hmm. he created um, some of the first disc golf ba- uh, baskets and, and, and uh, essentially created uh, disc golf itself. Um, but when he passed away, he was cremated and his final wishes, he wanted his ashes pressed into putters so he could fly with yeah. his discs. And you can still find those uh, for sale, the putters with the father of disc golf's ashes, ashes in, in them. So speaking of yeah. smell, I mean, not to be inappropriate, but, <laughs> but. where do you think those were pressed? <laughs> Did Gateway do that? <laughs> yeah, <I don't>. <laughs> <laughs> if they did and it was bad, I don't think they'd go for the wolf air. I, I mean, yeah, there's some things that could be pretty funky, I'm sure, uh, going through those machines. Well, Keith, it was super cool for you to come on the show. I no. appreciate you doing the show. Nice. I appreciate you having us. 
Yep. And it is super good to hear uh, why you decided to do the show. Of course, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm humbled by that. I appreciate you so much. And uh, I can't wait to see your, um, what do you call those? The flag things that you had a name for them at the GBO. Yeah, oh, what did I call them? Oh, <laughs> the feather feathers or something. I don't know what they're something. <laughs> Can't wait to see your birdie fuel stuff everywhere. Nice. Uh, on My tours. wife's on the banners. It's great. She's she's always like, are you really using those? I'd like made them without her knowing. <laughs> I, was like, I put them up in the backyard. I was like, look at these things. They're going to be in Kansas at that tournament. She's like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, and I put your face on all this other stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, awesome. <laughs> they got married, but they'll be out there this year. So hopefully she'll, you know. She'll watch uh, Joe Mez or Geeky coverage for a little while, or, or maybe the flags will end up on uh, ESPN, <laughs> right? Right, ESPN exactly. <laughs> so what, what a great conversation. And, and I'll remember this every time I see somebody post a picture of my book in a, in a, next to a coffee mug with a it's birdie coffee. logo it's on be it. Well, I sincerely hope you enjoyed the show as much as I did. If you want to learn more about Birdie Fuel Coffee Company, head on over to birdiefuel.com. And when you place an order, go ahead and insert the coupon code ZEN, that's right, Z-E-N, for 15% off your order. And that coupon code is only going to last to the end of April 2021. As always, if you want to help this podcast out, make sure that you're subscribing wherever you digest podcasts. Hopefully that's YouTube because it really helps on YouTube if you subscribe to us and make comments under the episodes. It helps push the algorithm so these episodes can get out to as many people as possible, which helps me bring on really great guests. Also, Share this podcast with your friends, share it on social media, and head on over to zendiscgolf.com where you can learn more about my books and uh, got a lot of really great apparel up there. But for now, I'll see you next time.